Welcome back. Today's video is all about what I sewed up in the month of March. So I made quite a few things, which is definitely more than I normally make in a month. Um, but I was feeling really energized to get back at my sewing machine after um, a couple months of not sewing very much. So yeah, I'm really excited to share what I made. So starting with what I am wearing, I made a couple projects for work. Um, so if you don't know, I am a freelance marketer and content coordinator, and one of my clients happens to be Forget Me Not Patterns. Uh, and I love working with Jo. Um, I really love her, I mean, as a person, she's awesome. Um, but I love her designs as well. So this outfit, and these two pieces are things that I made for a blog post, which I will link below. I want to just make the like disclaimer that like, yes, I got paid to do the blog post, but not to like share um, on any of my channels. I'm talking about these pieces purely because I love them and I'm really proud of the work that I did. So I did a tutorial on how to change the waistband of the Ella skirt, so this one here and this one as well, um, from a fitted waistband with an invisible zip to elastic. So this one is, I've got a belt on over it, but this one is fully elasticated and this one is uh, a flat front with an elastic back. So, and then I made a couple tops to go with them. So to get into it, this is the Vera top. It is a free pattern. Um, the, it comes with a v-neck as the free version and then there is a two dollar scoop neck add-on that I used. And I think I've talked about it before. It was in my Make 9. I did like a, a seafoam green version and I also have a purple one. It's one of my TNTs and I, I just really love that it like fits like a t-shirt, feels like a t-shirt, it's cozy and comfy, but with a little extra like flair that makes it kind of elevated, more blouse-like. Um, so I really love that and I made both of these, tea. this is a different tee, but I also made it in the same bamboo cotton jersey mix that I love so much. Um, it just like, it behaves better than it's everything I like about a viscose jersey in how it like hangs and sits on my body, but it has a bit more structure and it behaves better like a cotton jersey would. So it's just like the perfect happy middle for me. So yeah, that's the Vera top. And then, yeah, like I said, I made the Ella skirt. This one has a fully elastic waist. Um, and this is the knee length version. The pattern comes with a above the knee, at the knee, and then a like ankle length maxi version. Um, and then there's three pocket types you can do as well. Two of them are patch pockets. I chose inseam pockets um, for both of these skirts actually because they're both in a viscose and my experience with patch pockets and viscose has not been a good one. They just have always seemed to be kind of like sad and saggy. But so yeah, I went for inseam pockets and I actually top stitched them down. Um, Cause yeah, I really hate a floppy pocket. Usually I will like anchor the pocket in the waist seam, but because it's a gathered skirt, it kind of like gets a bit bulky so it is like a nice teardrop shape that makes sense but I still didn't want them like flopping around I hate when you go to put like your hands in your pockets or or like your your phone or whatever and then it's like you're going backwards to find them um, so I anchored them to the front of the skirt and I'm really glad I did because <laughs> it feels so much better so yeah I love that um, the viscose I got at the Lockyas Markt, which is a big outdoor market in Utrecht that happens every Saturday. Uh, there's always some really nice goodies to be found there. This one, I was like a little bit annoyed 
because, well, I have no reason to be. I saw this fabric at the first stall and I was like, oh, I love it. So I bought it right there. And then I found it at another stall for cheaper. And I was like, dang it. But it was still really inexpensive. It was like, I think it was five euros a meter. Um, so I really shouldn't be complaining at all. Um, it was not the most fun to work with. Uh, whenever I work with a thin, floaty, drapey viscose, I'm always like, oh, why do I do this to myself? I should only sew cotton. This is so annoying. And then I wear it and I'm like, oh yeah, this, this is why it feels so good. It's so soft and flowy. Yeah. So I really love this one. Um, yeah, I think both pieces are really cute. I know I will get a lot of wear out of the skirt in like the spring and the summer. And, um, yeah, oh, a white jersey top like is gonna serve me through probably all the seasons. So very happy with these two. So this is the second outfit that I made for the blog post. Now the blog post was all about the skirts, but I figured that I would make um, the little tops to go with them since it was for the forget me not blog that I would make forget me not shirts as well. Um, it wasn't part of the brief. I didn't have to do that, but I'm really lacking <laughs> um, knit tops in my wardrobe. So I kind of seized that opportunity. Um, so this is the forget me not iris tee. Um, it comes in a couple of versions. Well, for one, you can just do like a plain short sleeve or three quarter length sleeve. Um, but then it also comes with this really cute pleated short sleeve or like this one, the, oh, I feel a little silly doing that, but it is like the best just way to show you. I think, um, this like really cute little pleat detail on the three quarter length. Um, yeah, I really like it. It's really fun. Again, it's like a t-shirt that is just that much more fun. Um, a little extra detail I think is really nice. It feels a bit more like elevated or yeah, just like a step up from a t-shirt. Um, I really love it. I love this color. It's, it's called dark mint, but I think it, I think of it more of like a seafoam green. Anyway, uh, I love it. I know it's something that I will wear a lot, especially like spring, summer, fall. Um, I don't, the only thing is I probably won't wear it in the winter because I won't be able to like layer it up without it getting like smushed. Does, and it really bugs me. Does that like, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I really don't like the feeling of sleeves. Be <laughs> anyway, that's not what we need to talk about. <laughs> Uh, what I do want to talk about is this skirt. I, I like the blue one. I love this black one. So that one, um, the blue one has the fully elasticated waist and this one has a flat front with an elasticated back. So I break it down in the tutorial. I would say that this is like the easier one to draft. This one requires like just a little bit more thinking through. Um, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. I really, really love it. I will say that I took my measurements and cut the pieces and then I got the flu. So it's now a bit too big for me. I am hoping that I just like return to the size and weight that I was because I really don't want to unpick all the rows of top stitching that I did over the elastic. Because uh, I would say it's like, probably like an inch too big for me right now. I'm pretty bummed about that. But, so I'm gonna wait and see if like I go back to my normal size or if I just have to do some unpicking. Wouldn't be the end of the world and it's definitely worth it because I love this skirt so much and I really want to wear it without thinking about like, oh, is it staying up? like. Yeah, because it, de it definitely feels like it wants to just like droop down a little bit. But yeah, so this one is the shorter length, which I haven't, I thought that I would really prefer the knee length, but I made this one shorter because I figured I'd wear it 
through the winter as well with like tights and boots so I wanted it a little bit shorter but I found that I just really like this length and I wasn't expecting that because I was like oh it's a mini skirt and or it's like close to being a mini skirt when you're 30 is that and then I'm like I don't care I don't care I like it so much and uh, those are silly rules anyway so I'm gonna wear it it's a bit short but I love it what is nice is that it's longer in the back and that's kind of the all of Joe's patterns have like a little something that makes them special so like yeah the iris tee has the fun little pleat for the Ella skirt it is this high low hem with the little ruffle so it is nice that I have like some practical like length in the back um but yeah I really love it again I top stitched the pockets um yeah so I love the shorter length I also really really like this fabric um I also got it at the market in it's fact the same day I got this one and I was with my friend Joyce and she <laughs> she was laughing at me because I saw this and was like yes finally that's because we had been like all through the market and this was the last stall that we stopped at and so I, I liked it so much that I bought six meters of it uh, to be fair it was like three euros a meter so I mean couldn't pass it up but I knew that I would want it not only for this skirt but also maybe as like a dress down the line I was thinking even like maybe a Christmas dress uh, looking at the fabric I don't think it's necessarily Christmassy on its own but it has all these really beautiful like jewel tones in it like uh, there's like a uh, what's, I want to say copper blue that's not it cobalt cobalt blue thanks for that um, but then there's also like a green that is similar to this as well as an olive green there's like peachy pink tones there's a red so there's just like so much that I can pair this with as a skirt but I also think it would work really nicely for like a holiday dress or something like a bit more fancy I guess so yeah I really really love this one again like swoosh factor very very good um yeah I know I'll be wearing it a whole bunch we'll see if <laughs> we'll see if I have to make any like modifications to to the waistband but if I do it will be worth it even though like the thought of picking top stitched elastic just makes me want to cry it would be worth it because I need to wear this skirt like as much as possible <laughs> so next I have the Adrian blouse from Friday pattern company and hmm, I would say like the jury is out on this one not because of well not necessarily because of the pattern but I made a size too big um, and I <laughs> so this was the first thing I made after like a couple weeks of being sick um, and then after like a month of not making anything and so looking back I'm like mm, yeah I was really <laughs> like my head wasn't quite in it uh, so yeah I made the wrong size and I realized that yeah I picked the size based on my waist instead of based on my bust and hips because the point and I like even wrote this down in my I have like a ridiculous color-coded Excel sheet <laughs> with all my sewing plans in it and I'd even like put in a note like grayed out the waist but instead I picked the size based on my waist and then grayed it out uh, so yeah that was just like a silly mistake um, so it's quite like gapey here I took out a lot of the elastic think like uh, somewhere between like four and six centimeters so it was like quite a lot um, out of the shoulder which I often like I'm pretty short here apparently I always have to do some kind of adjustment whether it's like a sloping shoulder or um, yeah if it's a raglan I usually take out a little bit um, yeah so it's <laughs> so I expected it to be too big there but it is like gapey here as well and then the sleeves are longer than I 
would want. So none of that is the fault of the pattern. That is all on me. It was still like a great learning experience because I really, really love the shape. I love this like color. Um, yeah, like this Bordeaux, I think it was, I think it was called raspberry. Um, but it's called a summer cotton jersey. So it's very, it's much thinner than like a regular cotton jersey. And I think in my mind I had equated thin to drapey. And that wasn't quite right. It's definitely like got more body than a, like a viscose jersey or a bamboo jersey, some kind of mix there. Um, even though it is like the same thickness as like one of these, um, it definitely like has more body and doesn't gather up quite as nicely as the, um, something like that would. So I have that in my notes for next time as well. <laughs> Hopefully next time I'll actually read my notes about what size to pick and what material to use. But um, the other thing that I didn't love about the pattern is that I was expecting a better finish. So this is the, you finish the sleeve edge here and then the neckline separately and then they're just like joined together so you have like the little nub um out and I was thinking that it was going to be a more like a facing situation um ultimately I think that that would be much cleaner much better but it is a beginner pattern so yes doing a facing would be nicer but that would also like complicate things more so I understand it's just not my preference um, will I make it again? Yes. And I've already got uh, a couple of fabrics in my stash uh, labeled to be an Adrian blouse, but again, I will make the right size, do it in a <laughs> drapier fabric, uh, and then I think I will shorten the sleeves a little bit this way and then also like this way, um, yeah, to account for. I, I just think it looks better um a little closer to the waist as far as with the sleeves being so big I think I'd like them a little shorter and then again because my shoulders are a little or like this distance is a little shorter on me than than like most patterns are drafted for yeah but I so it was a really good first try of this pattern I will wear it but it's, it does, it's not one that I like love that I'm super excited about, which is very fair. I mean, you win some, you lose some, and you don't always know until you try. So that's this one. So I was planning on getting like a pair of jeans or something for the rest of these uh, tops that I had to show you, but I actually like quite like it with the skirt. So this is the Peppermint Paddington top. Uh, it was designed by French Navy for Peppermint Magazine. It is a pay what you can um, pattern. And I really, really love it. Um, so this was on my spring plans. And I was initially like not going to <laughs> start any of those until like April. But then I realized that it like met the requirements for the So Frugal 22 challenge in that it's a free pattern that's a garment and this was a fabric for my stash, not a new fabric. So I was like, oh great, like I'll just get started on it early. And then like <laughs> I couldn't get my, so I finished it in time, but I like couldn't get my life together to like photograph it and actually enter it into the contest. So. Here's my So Frugal 22 entry, several days late, but you know, so goes it. Um, anyway, I am really happy with how this turned out. I think it is something that I will wear all the time. I love the raglan sleeves and like the big puff. Uh, the fabric is like, I love it. I love it so much. Um, I love the texture and like how it really holds the 
sleeve really nicely. It's a cotton dobby from Ansha.eu or Ansha Handmade. Um, it was a pain to sew. Uh, for so many reasons. Yeah, so partially the fabric. My sewing machine really did not like it. Like, it's a very fine cotton, but these, like, little dobby pieces, I don't even know what they're called, clip dots? I think they're clip dots. Um, are quite thicker. So my needle was like getting stuck in them. Uh, I even tried my walking foot, but that made it like worse. Um, cause yeah, it was, my sewing machine was having a hard time with like the different textures. So it was, <laughs> it was a challenge to sew. It did get better when I changed out my needle for a thicker one because initially I was using a size 70 because this is again like a very light cotton and I figured like something in the you know you match you match your your needle to your fabric weight but in this case I really needed to match it to like the weight of the thickness at the clip rather so anyway I changed it to a bigger needle and it got better but it was still a struggle the other struggle that I had was with these sleeves. Um, I really just like the method that the pattern has you do of just turning up the hem to thread the elastic through because for one, the sleeve is like this big. Like it, <laughs> this is definitely a fabric hungry pattern, which is fine. And again, like I think the result is beautiful, but it's like super, super curved. It's like very dramatic um, to get the big puff. And turning that over neatly was such a struggle. I would much, much rather draft a, a inside facing to make the elastic channel. That is definitely what I will do next time. I think it took me probably a total of like five hours to hem these sleeves. I'm not the fastest sewist, but that is extreme. Uh, yeah, because it like has you baste, uh, put basting stitches so you can kind of gather them in to like make it sit flat, but that like was not happening. Probably exacerbated by the like different textures in the fabric not quite wanting to sit right. Although it's cotton, like it did press pretty well, but it still like wanted to move around a bit. And then like your channel is supposed to be more than two centimeters and I could barely, and you're supposed to have like 2.3 centimeter wide elastic. I could barely, I knew that was not gonna happen. Um, so I went down to one and a half centimeter elastic and I could barely get it through. Um, so again, <laughs> again, this is like pretty fresh off the machine and I'm still like maybe having some trouble differentiating how I feel about the finished product and how I feel about wearing the top with like my frustrations about making it. <laughs> I will say, I think I'll make it again because again, I really love the shape. Uh, I love a raglan sleeve. They're my favorite. Um, and especially like a raglan with this fun poof. I keep like messing with it because I, I just like it so much. But I will definitely draft a sleeve facing next time and I think I will take out um, a little bit out of the center back as well. Um, I left off the button placket. I just cut it um, I couldn't cut it on the fold because I didn't have enough fabric. So I just cut two back pieces and sewed them together, which meant I had to do a little finagling with the facing because it has like a step back facing, which is a super cool technique. I really, really like, but I just didn't want, I just didn't want to do buttons. And I'm really glad I didn't do buttons because it, yeah, my machine probably would have like freaked out. My machine does really good buttons, but I think with the trouble it was having with the clip dots, it would have been a mess. 
But my real reason was that this was going to be for So Frugal and I didn't have any buttons that matched, so I didn't want to go buy buttons for a sewing challenge about not buying things. So, but in the end, I'm really glad I went that way, even though I didn't actually enter it into the contest because again, could not get my life together. But you know, it's not about that. It's, uh, it's about sewing something fun. And yeah, now I have this cool, fun top in my closet. The last thing I made is probably my favorite. Uh, this is the Jackson pullover from Helen's closet. And I feel so silly about this make because I have like five Jackson tees. I have two that I made like as part of a pajama set and then I have three that I wear like I wear all three once a week whether it's like under something or on their own and they really like need some love actually <laughs> there's one that's like almost falling apart because I wear it so much but for some reason I was like oh yeah I like the t-shirt but I'm not gonna like the pullover I, I really can't explain why I thought that. Um, so I put it, I just like didn't make it for ages. And then I had this fabric that I really wanted to use this season. Um, it's a CU at six French Terry with matching ribbing. Um, I could not tell you the color. It's it's either balsamic green or Atlantic blue. I tried to look it up, but honestly, I cannot tell the difference between the two. So it's some blue green <laughs> by um, See You at Six. And yeah, so I really wanted to make it up this season rather than like waiting until next fall to have a sweater. Um, but I couldn't decide what pattern to make. And I was just feeling like I really wanted to like, do I want to make something fancy with it? No, because I because I'd want to twall something new. I'll just make the Jackson. And it can be like more of a loungy sweater and not like a favorite sweater. It's a favorite sweater, <laughs> even though it is kind of loungy. Um, yeah, I thought I wouldn't like the drop shoulder in a thicker fabric. I think that was like my hang up, but I actually love it. It's so cozy and Yes, I would wear it with this skirt. I might tuck it in if I was like going somewhere, I, I don't know. Um, but I like this look too, this casual sweatshirt skirt combo. But yeah, I, okay, so usually, this is how much I love this. When I make something, I usually like take it from my, from my sewing machine, and I come up here and I hang it on this little rack and I don't wear it until I finish a video or I take pictures, whatever, because I know inevitably I will like wear it and get food on it or whatever, or then it will be in the wash when I want to film. So I just like don't wear it. I could not resist with this. I only made it a week ago and I've tried to wear it like every single day <laughs> this week. Uh, I did have to wash it because I got like, popsicle on it and then I, I don't even know but it was that's how much I like it I could not resist wearing it every single day so yeah I really love it I want to make I immediately want another one though I, I want to say that I really loved making it with this ribbing um, I've tried other ribbings in the past and I've just been like Eh, I'll just use like self fabric because I don't really like I, I just like don't see how they're better most of the time but this ribbing is so fantastic it was so quick um I think the assembly for this sweatshirt took me like an hour and 15 minutes which is a record for me <laughs> to make anything um, and part of it was just because this ribbing is so nice like it just does everything you want it to do uh, it stretches it stretches but it's also like forgiving I don't know but I really love it I am so happy with this I want to make eight more <laughs> um, I won't because it's like almost springtime but I know that this will be a sweater that I keep out like all year round I usually do um, 
I pack up all of my off season stuff, bring it up here to the attic because my closet is really small. But so I'll pack up all my other sweaters, but I'm definitely keeping this one out because yeah, I love it. So yeah, that's everything that I made in March. Uh, I love sharing what I'm making with you guys. Uh, that's always fun for me. So hopefully you enjoyed it too. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon with my plans for April. And I've also got some like fun projects uh, in, in the works uh, that I'm excited about. Uh, so yeah, until then, happy making. Bye.